In this video, we are going to be taking a look at JUnit 5 assertions. Now, assertions are something that you're going to say, I'm asserting this condition must be true for the test to pass. So there's a variety of ways to look at different attributes in a programming environment, but just remember that there's actually a lot of different ways to do assertions, and we'll see some examples coming up here. In the test-driven development section of the course, we were using assert equals. So I believe that's the only thing that we used in that section. And basically we're saying assert two equals two. So we're always looking for that equality. We can also do assertions of not equal, not null. And there's actually dozens of them. And we will take a, a look at the assertion API here in just a, a moment. Now, usually the assert methods are gonna be overloaded to provide an optional failure message. So here I'm showing assert equals two and two values do not match. Obviously in that condition, we'll never get the message display, but assume that those are objects and maybe we would get that, that message. I see a lot of developers don't put messages in there. From experience, when you're doing testing and you have a test fail, that initial message may not be very meaningful, but to have a, a message there can be very helpful for things that could fail. So a lot of times, if you see something run on a CI build server, you look at these values and you're like, oh, what's that? And so these little messages here can, can definitely help you out in the long run. Now, JUnit 5 incorporates the support of lambdas in assertions. And it, it actually does it quite nicely, and we'll get into a number of examples of that. The uh, grouped assertions, we can provide a block of assertions and say that these must all run and... If any of them fail, then fail. Traditionally in JUnit 4, when an assertion failed, if you had five assertions and number two failed, that's where the test would stop. And this is nice when you're testing a lot of properties like on a type conversion. I've seen a, a lot of problems there where you fix one, run your test again, then there's another broken, you run, fix that, run your test again, another's broken. So having group of assertions is gonna be really nice for that. So you could have several test failures, several assertion failures, and you can go back and fix them all at the same time. Dependent assertions, we'll get into an example of that. This allows for blocks of grouped assertions, so you can do some very flexible things with that, say, to only continue on if uh, certain conditions pass. And then JUnit 5 also for exceptions and timeouts, they also use Lambda expressions. In JUnit 4, these were controlled with annotations, Five have moved them to uh, lambdas, and it's actually a, a much cleaner programming model. So we'll be seeing examples of that coming up. Now, JUnit 5 also will work with all the popular assertion frameworks. Generally speaking, you just need to include a, a dependency for your desired framework. There's no way that I can get into that. There's literally uh, dozens of variants out there, and I'm not being exaggerating at all. A lot of them are, are generalized, others are specialized. So you can find assertion frameworks for just looking at JSON. There's some actually very capable frameworks for testing JSON payloads. Some of the popular options out there right now, AssertJ, Hamcrust, and Truth. And right now I'm planning on doing a demonstration of AssertJ and Hamcrust because they are very popular and they do have some nice syntax that we can work with. Let's take a look at the JUnit documentation for the assertion framework. So up in Chrome on the screen, I, I have the uh, JDoc for class assertions. And let me scroll down through here. So these are all the different methods that we have. And there's no way that I can provide an example for each one of them. I highly recommend uh, going out to JDoc, you know, looking at the documentation that they have available for this class. And you can see that there's a number of assertions right out of the box with JUnit that's going to handle a number, number of scenarios. So like assert does not throw, so you're looking for it not to throw a specific exception. We've seen this assert equals, so there's a number of them overloaded. Scroll down, a lot of assert equals. Assert iterable equals, so a lot of different types. Assert same, saying that we're uh, looking at the same object. Timeout, we'll be looking at examples of those. And then here's some interesting ones that you might not have guessed. You actually have a fail there, so you can come up with a condition and if that specific condition is there, you can actually use this to fail a test. So I, I found that interesting. So get familiar with this API. There's really no way that I can go through each one of these. You can see it's uh, just scrolling back up here. You can see there's quite a few assertion options in here. So you, you do have a very strong framework right out of the box. And 
a lot of times you really don't need to turn to a third party library because of what you have within JUnit itself. But some of the other libraries will look at that. They do have some syntax niceties to them. And some people prefer that. I'm not going to argue one way or the other because people get very passionate about insert assertion library here. So I'm not going to fight that battle. I'll, I'll give you the options and let you choose.